amazing actually organizing Pack on Africa. We've had volunteers from across the continent and across the world uh, coming together to make this conference possible. One of the things that we hoped to achieve with this conference was engagement between people from different African countries with each other who otherwise would not have had a chance to meet each other and also with people from the international community outside Africa. And I can say that what we saw completely exceeded our expectations with the way people were talking with each other, working with each other, sharing ideas and helping each other out. So we're extremely happy about that. Being here is more of a two-way thing. Uh, my current research, um, which is into additive manufacturing, involves the use of machine learning techniques. Um, and so I'm here to know what other people are doing with regards to Python and machine learning and how people are going about the things they are doing. It's also on a personal level to also learn a lot more from the community. Uh, what really inspired me was I know some of the conference organizers and they invited me to be a keynote speaker. And so as an African American, it's, it was important to me to try to make a contribution to the Python community here in Africa. As I said in, in my keynote, my cousins invited me to come home. And so I came home to try to speak to my cousins and have something useful to say. Uh, so the main motif of the PSF, so it's pretty much its mission. So its mission is to help foster the Python community. So that means um, we pretty much support anything that helps grow and improve Python and its community. And that also includes um, Python development as well as our, our global community. I am a Vice President of Engineering at Brightcore, which is one of the diamond sponsors of PyCon Africa. And I've come here for several reasons, uh, the first of which is to meet uh, most of our African developer team. And the other reason is to uh, meet and interact with the African Python software community. It's a global community with African people in it. And I think this event is just a beautiful indicator because of how much support we receive from the global community that Africans are welcome in the Python community, Africans are celebrated in the African community. I'm super excited actually to see how technology is going to grow in the next few years in Africa. I think in the next five years it's going to be a completely different continent. Um, and so I'm very excited for that and I know Python is going to be right at the center of that. So. <laughs> I've been to many Python conferences and they've helped me a great deal and they've been very important in my career. Uh, in recent years I've been several times to Namibia for PyCon Namibia and to Ghana for PyCon Ghana and over the last 18 months we've been working towards this very first Pan-African PyCon, PyCon Africa 2019. I wouldn't have missed the conference uh, for the world. It's the first of its kind uh, in Africa. Um, and the learning that also comes with it, uh, learning the experiences of other developers from different uh, countries to also help enrich the community back home in Zimbabwe, learning how they have um, gone through the hardships of uh, trying to learn programming in, in Africa, in the African context, and also taking those lessons back home. And that's why I had to come through to the Python conference. Uh, I think this conference has really exceeded my expectations. Most of the time the first conference is like 50, 60 people, but so many people showed up from all over the continent. It's really been amazing. Yeah. And really the quality of the talks and the expertise that the people have, I was really deeply impressed. I am overwhelmed with happiness and the feeling of kindness I can't even start to explain. I almost got teary-eyed this morning when I got here, um, especially since it took me so long to get here. But um, just everyone is so passionate about Python here. And I've heard so many stories, people coming up to me and telling me that they want to do more. They're asking me what can they do to help improve education in Python and they want to bring it to, to students in high school. Um, so it, it's just an awesome conference. I'm, I'm really sad that I missed the first day yesterday. It wasn't really all about the talks because if I really wanted to hear the talks, I could watch it on YouTube, um, read it on a blog. It was meeting the people like all over Africa. And 
I guess we want that for everybody in Vila so much. Yeah, it's it has been a great experience. I came to meet other African leaders and other uh, Python users from across um, Ghana and other countries also close to Ghana. And I've done that. I've met so many African people, so many amazing people, so many people doing amazing stuff back in their country. And we have had so many conversations and in the end I learned quite a lot from them as well. The amount of talent that we already hired made us uh, get inspired to come and apply in Africa and find uh, other Africans, other fellow Africans that are able to uh, show their potential and are able to show their skills uh, in international companies like the one we, we work for. So that's what inspired basically uh, Brycor to be here in Python Africa. For me joining the Python um, community, um, I was inspired to join it because I want to be able to um, develop applications that could solve problems that we have in our communities. So I'm very passionate about giving back to my community and causing an impact within my society. Uh, so Django Girls is actually an initiative. Uh, there were two uh, women who decided to create a curriculum that would make it easy to introduce young women to, or women actually in general across the world, to Django uh, and, and to Python as well. Django Software Foundation is uh, a non-profit that is registered in the US and it's the governing body for Django Web Framework. We oversee the use and advancement of uh, Django all over the world. Uh, we support Django events as well as um, the use of J Django in general. It's usually two days that you can host a Django uh, girls workshop and there's an installation party to put all the software in your laptops and then there's a time to actually go through the tutorials. So we had a Django girls event right here at PyCon Africa and I think it's super important because I was first introduced to Python through the Django Girls tutorial as well. So uh, so what I shared was on in the, in the tutorial, I gave a tutorial about uh, the fundamentals, and fundamentals of software engineering. So what are some of the different practices that software engineers need to know beyond just writing uh, Python code. I also went through some basic Python code for working with spreadsheets. And that was in the tutorial. In the keynote, I talked about some of the the similarities and differences that African people, so I'm African American, um, some of the similarities and differences that African people in America, African Americans have, compared to Africans here on the continent and how we have similar struggles, but they're both things that we can work on, so. Uh, and I also gave a talk that um, sort of reflected on what we do in my country and how it works and what works and what doesn't work for us, so that I possibly encourage other Python attendees of Python Africa to start their own communities back home. I think some of the challenges have been uh, working remotely and also the fact that you know no one is paid to work on this conference. Everyone is just donating their time and their effort. And so this for us is such an honor. Um, for me specifically, you know, I think it's such an honor to, to be able to uh, have worked with people who have donated so much time to this this uh, event but uh, in the end you know I'm super super grateful with how it turned out we had some challenges particularly with timekeeping <laughs> and a couple other things but in general I really really thought the event went well and so I'm very very grateful to everyone that attended everything has been challenging from the logistics to the budget to the planning but that's normal for a PyCon. Uh, in Africa the challenges can be greater. In this case, for example, we had to bring travelers from across Africa to the event and it's very expensive to travel inside Africa. So our budget needed to be able to help support all those people to travel here. Uh, yes, I have encountered uh, challenges. Uh, West African food is a challenge. <laughs> it's my first time uh, in West Africa. I have traveled in the Southern Africa. Uh, the food is completely different, so adjusting to West African food has been a bit of a challenge, but I got to taste jello fries. Uh, yeah, which I've only seen in a couple of movies, so it was a good, and it's a good experience and also a challenge. 
Banku was my favorite since it's so different from what I'm used to, but um, I also like the jello fries um, and wachu, I think, the rice and beans, so wachi, <laughs> yeah, so. The food was uh, really good uh, at the conference. Uh, everyone speaks English. Well, there were some friends uh, speaking, uh, like Patrick from uh, DRC, but he speaks English very well too. No, I had a good time out there. I think the first thing is PyCon Africa 2020. We're not sure where that will be, but I think we've proved with this one that it's viable, that it can do the things it aims to do, and um, that people really want to come to it. So I expect PyCon Africa 2020 is going to be even bigger. We are planning for PyCon Africa 2020, and that is going to be bigger, it's going to be better, it's going to be so much more. Uh, the, the talks are going to be amazing and the community is obviously just going to continue to be amazing. Um, I would also encourage anyone across the continent who couldn't make it to consider applying and coming for next time. Also, you know, join, connect with the, your local Python community. The best way to learn uh, software development or programming is to actually build. So instead of us complaining about our vast problems in Africa, and to wait for aid coming from either outside of the country or from other people. Uh, just start building. Don't wait for anyone to come through uh, to save you. Just start building something, develop those skills. Even if the uh, unemployment rate is very high and the possibilities of you getting a job are close to zero, don't stop developing your skill sets because opportunity will always meet you when you're best prepared for it. So. I would recommend Python um, community to everyone. It's, everyone is welcome. We could, there's younger girls. We could also kickstart you with that. We could teach you how to program and... Programming is really challenging and um, it takes patience and time. So that's one of the two things I've learned. Patience and time will get you far when you're a programmer. It is 2019 as I say this, it's the middle of 2019 and the wonderful thing about our world is that we are no longer constrained by geography in our careers. If you're a software engineer in Africa, you can be working for a company anywhere in the world, be it in Africa, Asia or in the US. Um, and the inverse is true, if you are an African company, you can employ engineers from South America. Um, so. This kind of globalization, I think, is very uplifting for Africa, and I think that in the days to come, we're going to see the African software community and, and the businesses that surround that really take off. There's so much untapped, or not untapped, but unrealized potential here, and I'm glad to be here at the start of it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that sponsored this conference. We really appreciate it. Without you, we wouldn't be able to have so many people from across the continent come, have made it to this conference. Um, I'm also super grateful for every single person that donated individually as part of the global Python community and, and, or bought a sharing, sharing ticket. Um, again, this event would not have been possible without you. And so, yep, thank you very much um, for doing that.